What's good, fellas? Hey, sorry we made you wait there for a little bit. I almost pissed my pants. Very thankful that you are here, and it is a true delight for us. We love you, Cece. Thank yes. you for coming, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me again. Okay, let's dive in here. Uh, we can obviously start talking about the World Series, which starts tomorrow night on TBS, and all coverage on MLB Network is all day, every day, as the World Series starts to pop off. But what I would like to talk about is the baseball season as a whole. Okay, we've got to a point now where it's the Snakes and it's the Rangers. Rangers. Bingo. Astros and Phillies get knocked out. Now we got the Diamondbacks and the Rangers. How's the season been? Was it a good season this year? Did that pitch clock change a lot of things? How is the year and how is the baseball that we're going to be watching in the World Series right now? I thought it was a great season. I thought the pitch clock made a huge difference, you know, shaving off time during the games. I mean, nobody wants to sit at the ballpark for, you know, four and a half, four hours uh, watching the baseball game. So um, I thought the rule changes were great. I think, you know, getting rid of the shift um, and some of these rule changes are why we're watching the Rangers and, and the Diamondbacks in, in the World Series. I mean, you look at a guy like Corey Seager, he got killed by the shift for many years and now you take the shift out and you know, he was basically the batting champ and, you know, in the MVP running. So um, you look at the Diamondbacks and, and uh, you know, the speed and in which they play with and the stolen base attempts and, you know, the way they play the game, um, you know, it just all links to the new rules. So I thought it was a great year. And I think we got two teams that um, really leaned into the new rules and, you know, uh, kind of played with their rosters and adjusted it to the to the way that the game's going to be played. And, um, you know, now they're sitting in the World Series. Uh, World Series starts tomorrow on Fox. But I do love to hear that for the good of baseball. For the good of baseball, the rules changes have made it better, and we're going to continue to evolve because it's been electrifying to watch these playoff series. I will say it's been awesome these last few weeks. I should watch more. I know. AJ has a question for you. Do you think the uh, the clock, do you think it helps one side – more than other, like the pitchers, more than the, the batters, or like I'm thinking if you're a pitcher, can you can still kind of control the game and control the pace of everything like you might want to in the past? Yeah, I think I think at the beginning of the year, just like everything, the pitchers have the advantage, but it, it quickly changes. The hitters kind of caught up and, you know, figured out a way to adjust their um, kind of, you know, in-game, um, you know, at, at, at bat to at bat, the way they, you know, the way they kind of take pitches. So, um, I think they have just, they adjusted really quick, and I think they got used to it really fast. And we didn't see that many violations. I think everybody was freaking out about the way the, the game ended in the spring training and all the rule changes and all that stuff. And as the year went along, um, you hadn't seen any violations. And in these playoffs, you haven't seen any violations. So um, the players have adjusted, and, and the hitters have now – uh, kind of caught up. But I think you're right. At the beginning, you know, the pitchers were using it as an advantage. Are we still using spider tech? Hey, when I saw Ginkle doing with that ball, <laughs> hey, that ball was going from head to toes real quick. Straight shot. Unbelievable RPMs, I would assume, with the pitching. Where are we on that? Are they still checking pitchers every single inning? That got uncomfortable, I think, didn't it? I mean, that was a weird situation. Yeah, I mean, the, che the, the checks, I feel like, got uncomfortable, but I feel like they were needed, right, with the spider tack and, and the way that the game was going. So, um, yeah, I, I still see them doing checks, um, you know, after innings and even when guys are coming in from the bullpen. So, um, yeah, I mean, spider tack had really changed the way – you know, guys were able to spin the baseball and, and uh, you know, affected velocity and, and spin rate and all of that. And the hitters were put at a real disadvantage. So was spider attack around when you were playing or no? What were the... Man, you know what? Apparently it was, but I wasn't in the circle. So, like, it kind of pisses me off that, like, <laughs> this the guy that was making the spider attack, I know him really well, and I had no privy to any of this information. Maybe it's because I talked too damn much and I would have told everybody about the spider attack <laughs> and it, it wouldn't have got as big as it got. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely around when I was pitching and I had no idea. Well, so it's always been a part of the game is what we learned through the whole spider attack situation. It's like it was just taken to a level that was, like, morally incorrect. Kind of like what was the garbage cans, mm -hmm. uh, right, with the Astros. Kind of like what happened with New England with the cameras, what's happening with Michigan. It's like spider tech. Is that what it was for pitchers? Is that like kind of what it was viewed as? Almost like yeah, that, hey, it's too no, much. It's You're perfect. doing too much. Like is, is that yeah, why it's kind of got – yeah, sorry. The perfect example, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, crossing the bar, just doing too much. And, you know, when it, start to, it starts to affect, you know, the way, you know, normal guys are turning into now – you know, great pitchers, um, you know, you got to take a look into that. Yeah, I agree. I learned about it in the moment, and I thought to myself, would that have helped me? You know, couldn't hit strikes. It would have definitely helped you. you it would have definitely helped me, too, if I would have known about it.
Hey, I forget your story. You played football, and then you're just like an uber-competitive guy who wants the ball in your hand in the big moments. I think you told us a story about how if old buddy came out to tell Rivera. you— Rivera. Rivera came— was the only guy who was giving the ball to Yeah, yeah. If, if anybody sure. was coming out to take a ball from you, it was like, well, it's— is it Sandman about to hit right here? Mm -hmm. Is uh, Mariano Rivera coming out here, or is it somebody else? Uh, no, somebody else before that. Okay. Well, me at 60% is better than that guy. Get the hell off there. I feel like Absolutely. that's a massive piece— of these playoffs. I was watching, like, a guy got subbed in to pitch. I think there was two outs, but the bases were loaded, and he had this long season. I, I assume it was a great season. Mm -hmm. He gets in there, though, and somebody hits a bomb on him, and they lose that game seven of that. That dude's offseason has to be the worst of all time. Everything he did all season does not matter. That pitching position, you have to be a, a, a dog, it feels like, right? And which, yeah, which team has it and which team doesn't here in the World Series? I assume both, I guess. I think even more so being a relief pitcher, the, the the scenario you just described, because you can have such a great year, and then once you come in and and you know do something memorable, which blow a game, then that's all people kind of remember. You know what I mean? Not you know all the saves and everything that you know you did all that season. It's kind of you know it's kind of a thankless job. It's kind of like being a kicker in the NFL. Yeah. Nobody really notices you until you do something bad. So being a relief pitcher is is definitely hard, and especially in those situations in the playoffs and. You know, you get those one-offs. Like everybody remembers, you know, uh, Jose Altuve hitting a home run off of Rodgers Chapman in game six in the ALCS. So those little things people, you know, tend to remember, not all of the greatness uh, that a Rodgers Chapman has. So, um, you know, for me, I think in this series, I like Texas' pitching, um, especially their starters. Um, you know, Bruce Bochy lets them go deep in the games, um, kind of save his bullpen. So, um, you know, I, th I feel like they might have the edge in this series as far as pitching goes. I feel like that's the game. I don't know. Ty knows more than me, though, pal. Yeah, speaking of that, CC, I'm just curious. Like, when you do – like, the Rangers, they're obviously pretty heavy favorites here because of not only Scherzer and Evaldi, but Monty's been pitching unbelievable. But why do you think that, you know, like the Diamondbacks this postseason have kind of – in a couple of these wins went, like, bullpen by committee where, you know, you're seeing seven, eight guys pitch – why do you think teams are kind of going more towards that angle as opposed to, like you mentioned, like, you know, just putting the ball in Scherzer's hands and having him give you seven good innings and then just going to your setup man and then your closer? I think just teams are just short on pitching. You know what I mean? I think teams are just the way the game had been set up. Teams are just short on starters. Um, and I think people have found out that, you know, if you can run relievers out there, if you can l run your high leverage relievers out there, and not let hitters, you know, see this, the guy second or third time around, it kind of works. So um, with the way that the Diamondbacks play on offense, you know, button, button guys over, stealing bags, you know, getting three or four hits in a row in the inning, um, you know, it kind of it kind of helps them uh, if they can go a bullpen game the way that they play the game on the offensive side because they don't need many runs to win a game if they have a bullpen game. Got it, AJ. Is there anything that uh, that certain batters would do that would just drive you crazy and you just hated and want to just throw at them maybe? Or maybe you felt like, hey, I don't know, I don't like pitching around this guy? No, absolutely. Taking too long to get in the box. So that's why the pitch clock would have been great for me. If I'm standing up there on the – this what, what Pat's doing right there. Like, that pissed me off. Like, let's go – like, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I got shit to do after this game. Like, you know, like, I got a family waiting on me. I ain't got all day. That's what – so the pitch clock would have been great for me. I wish they would have put that in while I was playing. I mean, motherfuckers were ridiculous with it, weren't I mean, Oh, yeah. I remember, ridiculous. I remember watching, like, a big game. Obviously, it would probably be World Series or something. And this dude tightened his gloves every single pitch. Oh, no more. Every, yeah, no more used to be. Sean Casey, too. Yeah. It was yeah. – I'm like – I mean, even, even if you look at Bryce Harper last off – last, um, you know, postseason, the, the amount of time that he took to get into the box, and now you look at it this year with the, with the pitch clock, he made an adjustment. So, um, you know, I think people were were so, you know, scared and up at arms about baseball making a change when, you know, every sport makes changes all the time and, you know, to evolve and get better for the sport. And I think baseball did that. And I think, you know, the players have adjusted and, and the game's gotten better. Tom has a question for you. Yeah, CC, I, I feel like I noticed more of this playoffs, like um, guys like Ranger Suarez or Evaldi or Brandon Fat, who had okay regular seasons, but then they come in this postseason and have just been absolute nails. Like, what is the biggest difference pitching from the regular season to the postseason? And why is it like guys like that that have just been unbelievable in the postseason? 
You know what it is? I think it's just, you know, being able to lock in. And, and the postseason is just a month, you know, if you, if you think about it. Um, and, you know, certain guys can get hot and during the month. And I, I went to Game 7 to watch Brandon Fat the other day. His fastball to sweeper combination is ridiculous. I sat down low, and I was watching some of the swings that the Phillies were taking, and I couldn't tell which pitch it was. I couldn't tell if it was a fastball or the sweeper. So the his deception that he has uh, right now, um, is he's just locked in, and the way he's throwing the ball um, is great. And if, But if you really just think about it, it's just the month of October. So mm-hmm. he's having a great month. Um, guys like Evol- Evaldi, Scherzer, these type of guys, I mean, they've been there and done that. So um, I would always just, you know, even for, for me when I was pitching, I would always just tell the guys, just get me to the tournament. Like the summer, I'm just trying to stay healthy. <laughs> you get me to the tournament in October, I'll be ready. We had some highlights running on this back screen as you were given an answer. You were awesome. I mean, you're awesome to watch, too. I mean, you are dog. I mean, look at that walk, dude. Look at- uh, I'm about, I, I'm about, I lost about two people since then, though, man. I, look at that belly. <laughs> hey, but that, that weight was, uh, you know, driving the speed, pal. It was driving the speed right now. Is there any pitch Absolutely. you – so inform me here as just an absolute uh, ignoramus when it comes to baseball. Is there – so, like, Mariano Rivera did the splitter. Cutter. Cutter. Better. There's some people that can't do that. Like your arm just can throw certain pitches better than like other people. He could throw that pitch better than everybody else, and he couldn't throw any other pitches. Like what? It, why? Why are the pitches the pitches for pitchers in the MLB? Yeah, uh, he, the way he threw his cutter, um, I honestly don't know. You know what made his so much nastier than everybody else? I mean, obviously, you know, he, I, I got a chance to play with him, and he taught me it, and. You know, it extended my career because I started throwing it. But his was just, you know, it was unbelievable. He threw one pitch for 20 years, and he's the best pitcher to ever pitch. You know what I'm saying? So that's just one of those one-off things where you can't really explain, you know, why Mo is why Mo. Is Mo. But being able to spin a baseball is kind of like being able to spin a golf ball. If you, you know, you're playing a lot of golf and you understand the way it comes off the club, it's just the same thing, understanding the way it comes off your fingers and being able to spin the ball. The more you pitch, the older you get, the more you understand it. And, you know, I wish I would have knew, uh, knew a lot of the stuff that I knew when I was older, when I was younger, and actually had the ability and the body to, to put a, a lot of that stuff and to implement it. Okay, so guys are developing their toolbox every single offseason. Like, pitchers are just building new pitches and new pitches. And that's why I love I love the game of baseball, and that's why I love golf. And, and they, they kind of mirror the same thing because you're never – you're never done. You never master it. You can always add. You can always get better um, with the game of baseball. I feel like more so than basketball or football. You kind of max out, I feel like. But with baseball, it's just infinite. You can keep going and same with golf. How come you guys don't just add the knuckleball? You know what I mean? Yeah. How come- I, I threw a knuckleball in high school. They took it away from me. Why? Because it was kind of trash, but I, I definitely threw it in high school. <laughs> the ball had a lack of spin. It had a lack, it didn't move much. But why is that one not like it's just hard to throw? It's a very difficult. It's really hard to throw. Oh, okay, because Wakefield yeah. what just only threw. Oh that, yeah, right? yep. strictly. I remember when he showed up. I, what years was he playing? Rest in peace, obviously. Wow, nineties yeah, and two thousands. Yeah. yeah, but maybe in high school a baseball game would come on and then you watch this. It's like a show. Yes, like, it's like how yeah. much can he get this thing to move? I felt like that with Ginkle the other night with mm-hmm. his his curveball. There was some nasty shit being thrown the other night against the Phillies. How'd the Phillies lose? CC? okay, like how how'd they lose? They were supposed to win. I was supposed to be you know, a fan of the team that wins the World I Series. Think they got, I think they got beat. You know, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I think everybody wants to talk about, you know, how they choked or how did they lose two games at home. I think, I think the Diamondbacks just went in there and, and, and played good baseball. They got timely hitting. They pitched well. Their bullpen showed up. And I mean, you know, I, I, like I said, I was at game seven and just watching Corbin Carroll you know, every time something needed to be done right, he did the right thing. Hitting the ball up the middle, getting the ball, getting the guy over. They bunt guys over. They they steal bags. They just play the game the right way. And um, sometimes when you do that consistently, you know, you end up winning baseball games. Hell yeah. Well, I can't wait to watch who is the next World Series champ. Hell yeah. You got the Arizona Diamondbacks. You got the Texas Rangers. Good luck out there. It all starts on Fox tomorrow. What are you doing? Are you on every microphone? Hopefully. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be at the games. Uh, I definitely uh, – the atmosphere in Texas is is uh, is crazy. It's a lot of fun. So, I'll be there, and I'm looking forward to seeing Arizona. How's the golf game? How's the golf game? It's getting there. I'm on my way to the course now. 
Hey, I just got, I just, I was at the Champions Dinner at my country club the other day. I got most improved golfer of the season. So, wow. That's Whoa. a big accomplishment for me right there. Hell yeah. Did you guys have a, a lunch? Did you have a lunch for that? Most improved golfer? Yeah, it was a big dinner. So, it was good. Did you give a speech? You gave a speech? No, hell no. I just got my trophy in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it moving. You just picked it up and did one of these. Hey, to next year. Thank you. The next year. You guys said I was trash last year, is what I just heard. But yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Absolute legend in the baseball world, CC Sabathia. Thank you, pal. Hey,